All right, we're going to do all characters ranked for the month of June 2020. I just want to thank everyone who liked last month's video. Had a fun time making that video. A lot of incredible support. And we're going to get to this month's list. And there's going to be some changes, uh, mostly because in this month, we've got full knowledge of where Thanos and Ebony Ma sit. Woo! Plus, we've got some new characters that are out. We've got X-Force. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to focus on the very top of the list and the very bottom of the list. But let's get into it. Now, if this is your first time watching this video, I kind of do a little bit different valuation than other people. Uh, for me, the most important thing in this game is how often do you use the character? And so I've created a uh, spreadsheet here, which has every single character on it. And it's a number between zero and six. And six is currently the highest. I wanted to make seven the highest, but then I thought it would be kind of confusing. And I just want to explain what that number means. It means, how often do I use this character? And six means I'm using this character everywhere quite a bit. And these are the characters that are amazing. And I'm gonna say that fives and sixes are very similar, which not would split too many hairs on the difference between five and sixes. And there's a, essentially six game modes currently. And a lot of characters qualify the, for the two most basic game modes, which would be Blitz and War. I'd say a, a large percentage of this, at least 18, 19 teams in your roster are should be good in at least two game modes, right? Blitz and War. Then we've got PvP, no rewards attached to that, I understand, but I think it's a good measure of how good a character really is. Like Taskmaster is amazing in PvP. We've also got Dark Dimension 3, which we're gonna talk about in detail at the beginning. Then we've got U7 or U6, but primarily I'm using running U7. And then we also have, of course, Arena. So. Uh, before we start splitting hairs, I just want to say that I kind of split this month's list into groups of 17. And I don't know how that worked out, but I've got like the top 17 characters, which are sixes and fives. And then I've got, which are God tier characters. And I, I don't want to split the differences between what's a five and a six because boy, I could have put Captain Marvel at a six and maybe I could have put Hela at a five. I get it. But I just want to say that these sixes and fives here are pretty much what, uh, if you're starting out in this game, you should be working on getting these characters. These are the characters that you should be putting T4s into first. Seriously, this, cause I'm getting use out of these in many, 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 many game modes. And I also on this particular list, which is a little bit different than last month, I made an, an extra consideration for if a character helps you get a legendary character. For example, Hela is amazing, not only in many game modes, but she also helps you unlock Phoenix and Black Bolt. And then Black Bolt helps you unlock Ebony Ma. So I don't want to ignore Hela as being a character that is the pathway to basically three amazing characters. And then as we go down further on the list, you know, I may have give, given a relatively bad character like Mysterio a three instead of a two, just because Mysterio is Sinister, uh, sinister Six, and that is a pathway to unlocking not only Invisible Woman, but also Shuri. I'm getting better at my newscaster skills. <laughs> what a weird job I have. Anyways, I'm going to talk about the fours, the sixes and fives at length because I think people need to focus on those and putting T4s into those characters. And then I'm also going to talk which ones I would highly suggest uh, taking to 14 first because they're gonna make your life a lot easier in Dark Dimension 3. And then we've got down further on the list, we've got what we call fours and threes. And let me just put it to you this way. These are characters that I just happen to love and I use quite a bit, not as much as the God tier. These are amazing, great characters. Now, your experience may vary depending on what part of the game you're in. Maybe some of these characters that are in threes and fours are, are going to do you well in your arena and you're at the top of your arena with Magneto and Juggernaut. I get it. Or Agent Coulson and Nick Fury. I just want to say that at, at end game, I'm not using them as much anymore as I was was using these characters. Some of these characters just allow me to pathway to one of the top characters on the list. If you have high red stars on some of these characters, maybe you'll put more attention into them. 
And then we got, so threes and fours are like amazing. And there's 34 of them. So I've got 17 God tier characters. Then we've got 34 amazing characters. And then we've got what I call staples, which are these twos. And this is just our like a baseline for this list right here. And these characters are usually good in in war and in blitz. I I, I don't want I don't want to say how important they are. So like right now, a lot of people are unlocking Domino, uh, Nerd Sonic, and so far if we're gonna get X23. But if I'm being frank, probably Domino is only going to be useful inside of war and in blitz. How much resources do I want to put into her? How many T4s do I want to put on her? If I'm not going to be using them compared to those characters at the top of the list. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more. And then lastly, down on the list is the ones and the zeros. And boy, I think these are characters that uh, you should avoid at all costs. Um, let me put it to you this way. The ones and the zeros are characters that if tomorrow I open my very first red star, my very first seven red star and was one of these characters, I probably would be disappointed. Of course, Ultimus you can't get red stars on him only in five stars by going through uh, Dark Dimension three, two times, but we'll get to that. Let's go to the top of the list. And the top of the list I believe is the most important because these are characters that I believe uh, people should be working towards or if you have them develop them out as much as possible And I'm gonna go with this suggestion here first as far as going to 14 There are six characters. I suggest doing first if or six characters I suggest at least allocating the resources towards first before doing your favorite meta characters because by doing these six characters you'll be able to go through dark dimension 3 very quickly and then get tons of rewards at the end of Dark Dimension 3. And, and that is fantastic. And then you could upgrade all of them. The characters are Ebony Maw, Hela, Phoenix, Carnage, Symbiote Spider-Man, and Minerva. After those characters are at 14, you're welcome to take your favorite character. Let's say that it's Ultron, but I think it's a mistake to do Ultron before, let's say, Minerva, because you might get stuck on those really hard cosmic nodes. They're both tech. Ultron is an amazing character. You can see I've got him here at a six. Obviously, he's amazing. However, comma, if, if, if I take him to 14 first, as opposed to Minerva, and I get into a position where uh, I can't beat those cosmic nodes, and that's where I am right now personally. I, I'm really personally regretting putting all the resources into Ultron first before Minerva. Anyhow, all of these characters are amazing. Now, uh, some of these characters uh, were not here last month. I'm finding that Ebony Ma is useful everywhere all the time. I'm also finding that if I pair up Ebony Ma with Thanos, I can use him pretty much in every single game mode. People are using Ebony Ma and Thanos in Dark Dimension 3. They're using them in U7. Of course, they're being used in the arena. Of course, they can use them in PvP. Of course, they can be used in Blitz everywhere, right? And it's not the same for the rest of the Black Order. And I'm gonna talk about that right now. So there we got five members of the Black Order. But then when we start splitting apart the other three members of the Black Order, they're not as useful. Proxima, I gave a four because I'm finding that I can use her not only in arena, I can also use her in PVP. I like her stun, I like her, her first turn move, putting offense down. She seems to be the strongest of the other three. And then when it comes down to Corvus and Call, ah, I'm only getting used for those two characters inside of Blitz, War, and Arena. And that's it. I'm not finding much use for them outside of that. So uh, what my suggestion is, is if, hey, if you're focusing on a, any particular team, Let's say you're focusing on as guardians. Take a look at this list and you say, well, who should I put T4s into first? What is the best T4 for the as guardian team? And I'm gonna say, what are the best characters? And then look at their T4s. You know, I found that uh, the ultimate and the passive on Hela to be quite important. And I ended up going ahead and putting all the T4s into Hela at some point because I really like that character. And then also Loki, who's on this list right here. I found that his ultimate and passive were quite amazing. I, I'm just gonna go through and just talk about T4s real quickly, just what I did personally. I happened to put 
All the T4s on Black Bolt. All of them. Ebony Ma. I have all of them on Ebony Ma currently, except for his passive. Hella, I have all of them. Phoenix, I have all of them. Spider-Man, I have all of them. Thanos, I have all of them. Ultron, I have all of them. Captain Marvel, I have all of them. I don't know if you get where I'm going with this, but characters that I use all the time is where I dump all my resources into and put all my T4s. I mean, I'm using these characters everywhere. Probably Captain Marvel could have been a six, but anyways, Carnage, I did the passive. Colossus, oh, boy, I can't remember. I know I did his, his, uh, I have to go back and look. I know I did two of them. Invisible one, I did two of them. Loki, I did two of them. Minerva, I did none of them. Mr. Sinister, I did his uh, ultimate scientist supreme i did her special shuri i did her passive and her ultimate yo-yo uh i kind of went too heavy actually i kind of probably could have dumped yo-yo on as a four but that's another story but yo-yo uh her basic and her passive are the most important her ultimate and special uh, i did those two but i don't find that she's that great of a damage dealer okay the rest of these characters here in the four and the five character uh, category, uh, they could go up to a five. Possibly if I start using them more, they could go down to a three. Uh, I mean, it's we're splitting hairs on whether they're four and three, but these are characters that I just like. I get a lot of use out of in multiple game modes for different reasons. And if you have high red stars on them, go for it. Uh, these are going to be characters I think that uh, are probably not going to have as much viability six months from now as the characters higher up on the list. And that's the reason why I'm more excited about the characters high up on the list because I can dump resources into them today, get a lot of use out of them today, and probably they'll still be good six, four months from now. A lot of these characters like Magneto, he was amazing a year ago. I still use him a lot today, but not nearly as much, but if someone asked me, should I dump all the same resources that I personally put into Magneto? I guess like, I don't know. I don't know how good Magneto is going to be going forward. Uh, still an amazing character. There's lots of awesome things about Magneto. I don't mean to pick on Magneto because he's quite good. Uh, but is he going to get better six months from now? Probably not as the game goes forward. Another thing too is that uh, a lot of people may notice that I value probably the symbiotes higher than some people. I've got Venom right here at a four. I've got Carnage up there at a five. I got Symbiote Spider-Man at a six. Those three characters are just bonkers great together. Um, Symbiote Spider-Man I just really like a lot personally. And then Carnage passive with Symbiote Spider-Man is amazing. And then when you add Venom where he can do funny things with his basic attack flicking buffs and things like that. Uh, those those three characters, plus you throw in like you know some support like Shuri and Drax in War can defeat teams like Asgardians and Red Skulls. It's 2,000 IQ plays. It's complicated, and it could time out. But but I'm theory crafting or I'm speculating that if we get two more symbiotes, how crazy are they going to be? They're already amazing with three symbiotes and the synergy with the three. But if we get two more, woo, I don't know that we're going to get two more, but I, I'm pretty excited about symbiotes in general. Uh, and I, I think there's a lot of opportunity. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the fours and the threes individually. Uh, you know, if you just like one of these characters more than the others, be my guest, do whatever you want with them, especially if you have high red stars. Now let's get to the twos. Now these are the staples. And I just want to say about all of these twos in specifically like Domino and uh, and, you know, X-23, they, those are brand new characters. I don't know if they're going to be useful in other game modes. More testing, maybe next month list, we will know. But here's the deal. How much resources do I want to put into a, a brand new character that for sure is only going to be useful in two game modes? Now, I'm, I'm pretty much invested. I personally really like Alliance War, so I'm going to be putting at least a T4 into Domino's passive but I myself would rather be working on my Black Order team. Seems like the Black Order team is the real deal. Uh, my entire arena is lined up with Black Order top to bottom. It seems like at least 20 people deep and it turns out being the best team. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do. I'd rather focus on those guys than uh, and, and Ebony Ma and Thanos, which are useful in nearly every game mode rather than Domino. So that's where I'm putting my personal resources today. I uh, will be taking them up to 14. 
when I finish Dark Dimension 3, which means I need to get Minerva done. I need to get Symbiote Spider-Man done. I need to get Carnage done and so on. There's just kind of an order operation. And then when I get the rewards for Dark Dimension 3, I'll be there. So these twos, all of these twos right here are just like staples. And yes, some of them are better than others, right? I mean, clearly some of these characters have merits and, you know, you could say, well, Bullseye's great only here and Toad is only good here and Blob's better than this character and Gamora, ah, trash, but she helps unlock uh, Star-Lord, whatever. It doesn't matter. These are all twos. These are just staple characters. And if you have high, high, high red stars and you love them, Go ahead, but I would be leery on these characters of having limited use. Now, let's get to the what I call the ones and the zeros, and they're frankly just trash. Um, there's some of these I, I'm optimistic for reworks in the future, and I just want to talk about uh, the Ravagers in particular. The Ravagers have not had any reworks, so maybe these three Ravagers can be useful later. Uh, Yondu, I gave a courtesy point because some people use Yondu to unlock Star-Lord. Night Nurse, they've already said that they're going to give her a rework, but that it was also mentioned in the same sentence as Black Widow. But these characters are not good. You know, Ant-Man and Wasp, yes, they have that one-time event, but other than that, not so useful. Now, the, the real issue is with not these characters, but characters that have already had reworks or factions that have already had reworks, like Hydra Grenadier. Uh, Hydra got a rework. Pretty much all of the Hydras, including Red Skull, are twos because I'm using them in Blitz and in War, but this guy is odd man out. I'd be pretty disappointed if I pulled a high red star. Now, if I pulled a seven red star Hydra Grenadier, could I bump? One of those other characters off and, and substitute? Absolutely. But there's some characters that I'm just not really huge fans of. Aiming Factor, Researcher, uh, Hand Blade Master, Merc Sniper. I know some people like Merc Sniper better than Bullseye, but but it just for me, I'm not even using Bullseye because I'm going to use uh, Killmonger and uh, and uh, the Korath instead of along with uh, Merc Lieutenant, you know, in a Merc team. Anyways. It, some of this stuff is going to be dependent on your roster, but in general, all of these characters down here at the bottom at the zeros and the ones, uh, if I pulled a seven red star one of these characters, I would be disappointed if that was my first. I would not be thrilled if it was any one of these characters here. And if they were in the twos, I would be, okay, cool, threes, of course, and then, you know, we've got the list here at the top. All right, so I hope that the idea of uh, dumping resources into characters that you use is the most important thing. I think that's the most important message. If you're using characters in your arena, that's who the characters you put your resources to. If you lose a battle in your arena, look at your opponent's team. Maybe those are the characters you should put resources into. And that's going to be dependent on where you are in the game and your arena shard. But I'm going to say your arena is where to put the resources. Then whatever teams help you finish off uh, raids. And then, seriously, this game's about legendary characters. You know, focus on, le on on getting legendary characters. And I believe, you know, there's a couple pathways to go early on in the game to get Star-Lord. And then once you've got Star-Lord up and running, then you have to start thinking about, you know, am I going to be ready with uh, Minerva and Star-Lord to maybe get Ultron at some point? Uh, am I going to be able to uh, get... Invisible Woman and Shuri by going hard on the Sinister Six, uh, by going Hela and Asgardians uh, will eventually take me to path to Black Bolt, which takes me a path to Ebony Ma. Seems to be like a completely logical way of playing this game and getting ahead. And be mindful of the people in your arena, Sard, and see what they have. And if you see what they're doing, that's probably the same direction you should be going, especially if you're losing the teams. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming. Bye.